In this video, I'm going to give you a basic introduction into formal charge and how to calculate it. So here's the equation that I like to use. It's a simplified version of the one you might see in your textbook. And the formal charge is equal to the number of valence electrons minus the sum of the number of bonds and dots in the element that you're considering. So let me give you an example. So we're going to focus on calculating the formal charge of the nitrogen atom. And in this example, nitrogen is going to have two lone pairs. So using this formula, feel free to pause the video if you want. Calculate the formal charge on the nitrogen atom. So first, we need to determine how many valence electrons an atom of nitrogen contain. An atom of nitrogen naturally contains five valence electrons. And in this structure, how many bonds do you see that are attached to nitrogen? So if we count one, two. So nitrogen has two bonds attached to it. And how many dots do you see attached to the nitrogen atom? Not lone pairs, but dots. So there's one, two, three, four dots. Now two plus four is six. So it's going to be five minus six. So therefore, the formal charge on nitrogen is negative 1. And that's a simple way in which you can calculate the formal charge of an atom. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you a series of practice problems in which you can use that formula and you'll get used to it. So you can master how to calculate formal charges. So let's start with the hydronium ion. This is an oxygen with three hydrogen atoms attached to it, and that oxygen has one lone pair on it. Perhaps you've seen this ion before. So use the equation to calculate the formal charge on the oxygen atom. So go ahead and pause the video. The best way to learn is to put this information into use. If you don't use it, you're going to lose it. So if you want to learn it, make sure to do the work. So using the same formula, the formal charge is equal to the valence electrons minus the bonds and the dots. Oxygen naturally has six valence electrons. In this structure, there are three bonds and there's two dots. So three plus two is five and six minus five is one. So the formal charge on oxygen is positive 1. So you've seen this ion, it's the hydronium ion. But now you know that this positive charge is due to the formal charge on oxygen. Now let's move on to our next example. And that's going to be sulfur dioxide. So what I want you to do in this example is I want you to calculate the formal charge of every atom in this molecule. So go ahead and take a minute, pause the video, and give this a try. So I'm going to start with the sulfur atom. And here's the formula. Formal charge is equal to the valence electrons minus the bonds and the dots. So in the case of sulfur, let's put S for sulfur, Sulfur has six valence electrons, and in this structure, it has one, two, three bonds attached to it. And there are two dots attached to the sulfur atom. So three plus two is five, and six minus five is positive one. So I'm going to put a positive charge on the sulfur atom. Now let's move on to this oxygen atom on the left. So I'm going to put O sub L for the oxygen on the left. Oxygen, like sulfur, they're both calcogens. They're found in the same group of the periodic table. They're in the same column. So they have the same number of valence electrons, which is six. But in this structure, oxygen only has two bonds. But it contains four lone pairs. One, two, three, four. Well, it has two lone pairs, but four dots. And two plus four is six. Six minus six is zero. So the formal charge on oxygen is zero. Because it's zero, I'm not going to put anything on it. 
Now what about the oxygen on the right side? It too has six valence electrons, but it only has one bond in this structure. And it has one, two, three, four, five, six dots on it. So one plus six is seven. And six minus seven is negative one. So the formal charge on the oxygen on the right is negative one. So I'm going to put minus. So SO2 overall is a neutral molecule. Sulfur dioxide doesn't have a net charge. And we can see why. If you add up plus one and negative one, you get zero. So even though sulfur dioxide is a neutral molecule, within that molecule, you do have regions of positive and negative charge. Let's look at another example, the cyanide ion. Which element bears a negative charge, carbon or nitrogen? So use the formal charge to find out which one bears it. Now the Lewis structure of the cyanide ion looks like this. Both the carbon and the nitrogen contain a lone pair. So let's calculate the formal charge on the nitrogen atom first. Nitrogen naturally has five valence electrons, and in this structure it has three bonds and two dots. Now, three plus two is five, five minus five is zero. So nitrogen is neutral. Carbon has four valence electrons, but in this structure it has three bonds and two dots, just like nitrogen. So it's four minus five, so it's negative one. So in this example, carbon bears the negative charge, not nitrogen. Now what about NH4 plus? Here we have a nitrogen attached to four hydrogen atoms. And I'm pretty sure you realize that nitrogen is the one that's gonna have a formal charge of plus one. Nitrogen has five valence electrons and this structure has four bonds and no dots. So five minus four is one. So the positive charge is on the nitrogen. Now formal charge is useful for determining which structure is the most stable structure. For example, if you have OCN minus, if you draw the Lewis structure for this molecule, you'll see that there's many different ways in which to draw it. However, one of those representations is more stable than the other. And you can use formal charge to figure out which one is the most stable. Now let's count the number of valence electrons. Oxygen has six, carbon has four, and nitrogen has five. Plus we need to add one because of the negative one charge. So six plus four is 10, plus five that's 15, plus one. So that means that we have a total of 16 valence electrons. Now oxygen likes to form two bonds. Carbon likes to form four. Nitrogen likes to form three. So because carbon likes to form the most number of bonds, we're gonna put it in the middle. Now, there's three ways in which we can draw this structure. We can put a double bond between the oxygen and the nitrogen atoms, or we can use a single and a triple, or we can put three bonds on oxygen and one bond on nitrogen. Either way we do it, the total number of electrons will be 16. So every atom in this structure has eight electrons around it. So it seems like there's different ways in which we can draw this. However, these three structures are not equal. So which one is the most stable structure and how can we use formal charge to identify the most stable structure? What we need to do is calculate the formal charge of every element except carbon. Carbon is always going to have four bonds so we don't have to worry about the formal charge of carbon. But we do need to calculate the formal charge of oxygen and nitrogen. So for the first molecule, nitrogen has five valence electrons, it has two bonds, and four dots. So this is going to be five minus six so it has a negative one formal charge. So I'm just going to put a minus sign. 
Now the most stable structure is the one that has the lowest formal charge. It has the formal charge close to zero as possible. Now for the oxygen atom, it has six valence electrons. And this structure has two bonds and four dots. So it's going to be two plus four. Six minus six is zero. So oxygen and carbon is going to be neutral. For carbon, it's four valence electrons minus the four bonds and no dots. So that's going to be zero. Now let's move on to the next molecule. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. And this structure has three bonds, two dots. So 5 minus 5 is 0, and oxygen is going to be 6 valence electrons minus 1 bond, and it's going to have 6 dots. So 6 minus 7 is negative 1. So this time, oxygen bears the negative 1 charge. For the last example, nitrogen has 5 valence electrons. It has 1 bond, but it has 6 dots. So it's going to be 5 minus 7, so it has a negative 2 formal charge. And oxygen has 6 valence electrons, 3 bonds, 2 dots. So 6 minus 5 is 1. So oxygen has a plus 1 charge. So which of these three examples can we eliminate? Hopefully you see that we can eliminate the last one, because the negative 2 charge is very far away from 0. Now, between the first two, it's a close match because the formal charges are the same. Only one element has a charge in each of those uh, ions. So the question is, is it better to put a negative charge on oxygen or on nitrogen? Because oxygen is more electronegative, it's better to put the negative charge on oxygen. So therefore, this one is the most stable Lewis structure. This is the second most stable, and this is the least stable. So the best structure for OCN minus is this one. Now granted, even though all of these are resonance structures of each other, because there's different ways of drawing it, this is the most stable resonance structure. So the resonance hybrid of this molecule will appear to be more like this molecule compared to everything else. Maybe 95% of the resonance hybrid might be this molecule. Maybe 4.9% might be this one and maybe 0.1% might be this one. However, we can assume that the resonance hybrid will look like the most stable resonance structure because it's the lowest in energy.